There we go. Okay, you turn. Got the hello. Seeing the set on those wall traversing the wasteland. I mean, true. That is also kind of true. They will be a little more active there, doing stuff. Send some settlers, you know, on some caravan trading or something. Especially when you already, like, farm some type of resource and you can just, like, set them up to just, you know, get those resources to trade to other resources or sell, or sell them for money or some stuff. Could be more, could be more opportunities to do stuff with it. That might be actually cool. Probably not gonna be able to, like, meet them often again because of the huge universe, right? But you never know. Right, one second. Just charging my phone. See that point? 4x element sword. Well, I mean, like, it wouldn't be exactly like 4x, but somewhat. God, man. My friend's making some soup. It smells so good. It's like gonna close that window. I'm getting cold. There we go. I mean, some more management could make it kind of cool, at least. Yeah, like, it will be actually like some sort of like... I love you guys. Separate kind of gameplay that way could be interesting. Hey, CJ. Uh, welcome back to the dungeon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it a lot. Uh, life's good. Life's good, man. Hey, 500. Good morning. Life is pretty good. Yeah, early this week, I'm gonna be calling it a bit earlier today. Because I'm gonna go with our friends to to eat some local specialty. At the cooked cow's head. We'll see what that's gonna be. We'll see how that will go. So yeah, gonna be a bit early today. Finishing a bit early. Alright, let's see what is up. Icarus on sale. I didn't saw anyone's playing Icarus. Anyone's playing some Icarus? The cooked cow head, yeah. Like slowly, for a while, kind of like... I think it's boiled or something, or is it actually kind of baked? I think boiled, mostly. So yeah, we'll see what that's gonna be. You need to kind of like reorder that one can just go there and ask for it obviously because it's being made for a while so we already had everything i booked and arranged them i'm gonna go he could as these nuts them son insane a sacred hello a king's arthur a knight's tale on a sale and this we go on the play maybe on tuesday or something and now we'll actually have a couple of keys for that one too that's the tactical turn based. That really good reviews and stuff. I did already do that. When was it? A while ago. That yeah, wasn't first look Friday for a bit. That was last year, I think so. No. Or was it last year actually? April twenty two. Yeah, yeah, probably was. Hey, in the dev, hello. How we doing? So it was last year already. But yeah, it was nice. So we're gonna check. Check it out again, man. Gonna check it out again. Let's <laughs> see the device say. Sounds good. Huh? Sounds good. A bunch of DLCs on sale. A lot of Frostpunk stuff there, right? Let's see. Yeah, right, let's check what's up here. You die in the Dungeon Origins. Are gonna play soon. Eh? That's another prologue. Eh? They already had a prologue. Now they're gonna have another prologue there. See, so I'm gonna be building, uh, building some dice there. Yeah, the dice builder. The dice builder we are gonna play. 
The first prologue was really nice, but yeah, this is already the second one. I don't know, I don't know why. I'm not sure why. Uh, why two prologues? Uh, this is like the updated one, but there was already a prologue. Publishers get a prologue, yeah. Well, I assume maybe first one was uh, just Dev doing the prologue. I'm not sure. Can publisher rolled in and decided to do something more dink. And just roll another one. They will see. Yeah, I see you I see. I was there for a month. Ah. Interesting. Yeah, this one, the first prologue was cool. First prologue I did enjoy. So we'll do this one and then I'll wait for the full game. Cats hidden in a jingle jam now. Then sun. Cats hidden everywhere. Overwhelmingly positive. They be farming, man. They be farming. A cats equals a game of the year. Steam world build mostly positive. What do people dislike then? I would rather play Adolf for the city management, Dungeon Keeper for the mining and fighting, I see. Different maps don't change the gameplay much, which really hurts your playability. Thought this game was finished, thought this content is worth 30 euro. Yeah, move along if you're looking for the usual Steam World experience, alright. Expensive mobile game, dude. Well, the mobile game would be quite the stretch there, I would say. Yeah, one tenth of Frostpunk with one tenth of Dungeon Keepers. Now it's clearly, it's clearly... Uh, uh, no, nothing to do with Frostpunk really whatsoever. It's like it literally Anno, uh, that's why I'm kind of like not even interested because like... I want to play Anno, I play Anno. It already... I already have that at least, you know. And it does what it does good, eh? And this is just basically Anno, but like with the, the separate kind of like... mini gamers or something, I guess. So... Yeah, I wasn't really super impressed when I played the demo. It was good, it was okay, but yeah, like I would just rather play Anno and stuff. Instead of trying to, uh, to, 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 ma to mix and match, you know. Different one in. I mean, I'm impressed that a lot of actually like, games starting to like take the kind of ano ish concept. The one with the like the Himalayas or whatever, right? The the one where we're building the mountains. That one also had like the ano system. I think there was like some more. I can't really remember exactly what I was playing recently. It was one of the demos, I think, or something. It's like the same system of like you know you have like basic plebeians right you just like supply them with their needs then you can upgrade their habitats and they become you know one tier higher than just the plebs and then you supply new needs and like so on and so on i kind of like i can't say i'm a huge fan of that concept in general like the anoish concept it's all right but like i don't know i just like man like the more management like the tropical or something like that's my jam this kind of seemed like a little weird. Like you can need to supply some like in Tropica, for example, you could just decide what you want to do, right? You want to make money with like tourism? Sure, go for it. You want to get some sort of like specific industries developed? Sure, you can do those industries or you can do other industries. Uh, you don't have those resources to get that industry going? Well, just import export stuff, easy. And in these you kind of like, well, you want to have like, like workers, like I don't know, like artisans, engineers, right? Like you want to have like artisans. Well, you need to supply workers with like beer and sausage, for example. And like there's no other way like kind of around it usually. So you kind of have like this like utility for those goods. Eh? Like they, they're, they're used that way rather than just kind of having freedom what you want to do. And then, like, you know, like, the higher tier unlocked characters, sort of, types of classes, I guess, of uh, population, they can also work on higher tier uh, industries and everything. Which, I mean, in Tropico, you know, build a school, let them, you know, 
let them learn and then they go and they can get the, the higher tier stuff right get get them college and they get even higher tier kind of just like i don't know more more natural more realistic that way you know needs kind of make sense though i would say right like that the different kind of like classes of people uh different levels of like income and everything they require kind of different um like quality of life stuff that is a good system but i think kind of like making it a requirement to jump those tiers is kind of weird it's kind of should probably be more like you know you just like got like a bunch of like uh like university graduates and stuff in your in your settlement country whatever to work on some facilities but you only have some fucking little shacks and uh out of food you have only like papaya or something then you know they probably not gonna be happy so you kind of need to provide them with better better quality of entertainment like that would be kind of better i feel but i mean Anna is still nice though Anna is still nice though um apocalypse body some roguelike stuff oh, it's another of empire survivors like seems like right by the looks of it Oh, it's the, 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 the cool one. I think we saw it this last week or something. It's like in popular upcoming or something. Gotta make my own. Duke. It's a little different though, I think, but kinda. Yes, so is. Oopius. And the funny is a tag. Eh? Funny multiplayer co-op game. Eh? One of a kind rescue station. Team up with friends and use logic. Oh damn son, that's already hard. All physical based puzzles during your missions. Save cats, protect the town and unload the furniture. Damn son. Hey, hello. Gotta use that logic there, yeah. Imagine, imagine. The more co-op meme stuff. And the pinball M we saw before. It's free even. Where's the cat? Ah, oh, I see. Like the base is free and then you kind of like buy a Duke Nukem pinball, Dead by Daylight, the thing. A Chucky's Killer pinball. Dude, like if it'll be like this price, but all of them, that would be fine. But like if you need to buy every single pinball <laughs> for that amount, that seems kind of too dank already. Especially since there's probably going to be way more. So what do you even like playing if you get it for free though? Is there anything you actually play for free? Because I only saw these. The free one is kind of like just uh, like basic pinball or something without anything. Now, it looks kind of cool, but yeah, the pricing is quite something, though, I have to say. Pricing is quite something for these. Uh, for just pinball. The reviews are good, though. Another arcade pinball with just bells and whistles. Completely missing the mark. Alright. Mark on the physics. Cabinet supposed to rudimentary and does not improve on the unrealistic camera angles. No support for assigning custom cabinet buttons. Support for additional dedicated screens for a back glass or deemed. Oh, so someone is actually like trying to get it as a pinball thingy. Alright. No surprise at all, no support for DOF, physical plungers, uh, or accelerometer based nudges. Damn son, someone decided to win him with that one. That's cool though. Hey Axer, the hello. True sacred true.
horrible voice actor is screaming in my ear about her sinkhole every two seconds. All right. Damn, hello with new streakster. Insane. True, sacred, true. Huh? That's true. Hey, Steve, good morning. How are we doing? Truck and logistics simulator. That looks better than play way usually looks. <coughs> or is it? Yeah, that's new. Well, I result actually not that new. They already had some simulators before. I guess this one is out of early access, judging by reviews. Huh? Actually horrific. Not worth it the moment. Did it feel horrible? Doesn't cost the money that they're asking for it. Five euro at most. <laughs> Looks like shit runs like shit, alright. The rotten mop is too small and the jobs are garbage. Damn son. It's welcome to real life almost there. <laughs> Your mop is gonna be pretty small and the jobs will be garbage too. Well, at least graphics are okay, I would say. Yeah, more players joining on the simulator actually. Yeah, you, you, as, as soon as you get like some good, like, you know, framework sort of, you just can like put on uh, any other type of activity to simulate, then you're good. Yeah, yeah, RSL did. S I, I, did I play something? But yeah, you, you see that quite often. Yeah, they, they also farming. Heavy cargo, truck simulator. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the boss simulator is there. Explain also. Heavy duty challenge, city driver, subway sim Hamburg. Yeah, yeah, that was the, like sponsored by the. The city or something too. Autobahn police simulator. Yeah, there it is. A road maintenance simulator. A zombie cure lab they made out of this. All right. That one was already. Glider. Grand Casino Tycoon. A winter resort boss mechanic. See, stay away, see. Yeah, exactly if I want, and I would rather just play, you know, the Anno normal version. And Dungeon Keeper, I guess, separately, maybe. A Zussi tree? What is Zussi? Fern Boss Simulator in Ignored. Why even? Is because there's some sort. I need to specifically ignore, I guess, right? I don't know why I got there. I remember ignoring anything, actually. Maybe it's because some tag on it, though? Sexual content, I guess. Alright. <laughs> Got some sexual content there all of a sudden, alright. <laughs> In the bus. I mean, why not? And the bus sexuals there. Hey, Nick, hello. Buses and sexual content there, yeah. New York bus simulator, even. A world of subways there. Sticky bus simulator Munich. And they be farming, man. They be farming. Yeah, they could probably easy like to like command some of your government that way, right? You just kind of like, well, we're just gonna make the simulator for every city like bus or something. Like the lead, the most little possible, you know, graphics. You already have everything kind of prepared. Same bosses probably already and stuff, just make a new city. Boom, there we go. Here goes like 
a million or something, maybe from the budget. Yes, see, Steve. All right. So the Zussi is actually doing stuff. All right. I totally couldn't even copy that. Yeah. That level of genius is too high. A rock simulator. Damn. Second game even. Multiplayer meditative idol game. Many secrets to uncover. Begin your journey in the hideaway to relax and enjoy the greatest objects created by Mother Nature. Now that's good stuff. It can be a rock. Hundred percent usage at eight hundred FPS. That's why you have V-Sync on, brother. Using Kick W in Steam reviews. Huh? Where is this dude? It's the quality games, man. Hard six refunded, by the way. All right. They didn't hard six. He just refunded it instead. Huh? Yeah, they mentioned not making the rock simulators. With, multiple, with online co-op and everything, too. Time Walker, a duck world. Eh? Who? A roguelike auto battler, strategic combat. Adjust the formation plan, the resources, acquire loot, upgrade the skills. Eh? Uh, 1.0 full release. Um, I'd say it was dirty access, alright. Dice, hello, dice. That's mm -hmm, kind of interesting. Good reviews and stuff too. A great auto battler, I see. Translation is incredibly poor and music is glitchy uh, if uh, very repetitive. Huh? The replayability is good though, and the price isn't the worst for a game like this. That's 30 access. That was a year ago. Hopefully that was improved. Eh? Hopefully that got better. A TV. Oh yeah, that one. That actually is from the devs, I think, of uh, Rabi Ribi. They did the, they did send me the key and stuff, but yeah, when I saw like the bullet hell and stuff, and apparently first game was extremely. Extremely painful. And kind of like borderline, you know, borderline Kumar stuff there. So yeah, I decided to skip on this one. I'd rather not suffer, probably. The good reviews, though. Top sellers, the little company's farming man. You guys are insane. That one farmed like crazy, 103,000 reviews already. Impressive, impressive. A battle beat be mastered free weekend. A borrow 22, what is this? For a very low price, a jump. Then it's quite the, quite the description. We got even in the in the top sellers there, dude. Huh? Insane. At the Giga Racing. Sultan, if this can make it, you can too. Just need the right price and everything, though. 
Fortnite announced three games in Fortnite. Wait, which which what was that? Didn't uh, note. Didn't see that. Didn't see that. That's what I wish I was. Yeah. It's insane gaming there, dude. Huh? Swarug's dream. Eh? Hmm. That we saw before, I think, did we? Yeah. Die and be reborn, eh? So another roguelike, I assume. Oh, Lego Fortnite Racing. Oh, the, the Racing and Lego I heard. And it's a music game, alright. Interesting. So, the, but the Lego is like the separating. Okay, I thought Lego will be part of something. Race, racing stuff I heard, yes, a mode. Uh, racing stuff was already was rumored before. Perun. Vilis. And got all the Slavic gods there. And Marana. Marana I don't remember actually. The beta tester said I would describe it as Skyrim meeting Diablo. And you get some roguelike there. Not sure about that. I got the Perun. Yeah, Kira. Yeah, the story and everything, so maybe it's not that much of a, a roguelike. Okay, ever changing world. Uh, freedom to explore. Sure. Action shape the world around you. Lost soul and have the human hosts are desperate not to accept you. Pawn in the game of gods, eh? Or maybe not roguelike, actually, I guess. Hundred quests, a hundred unique abilities, uh, five hundred unique items. You'll have to eat, cook, sleep, craft potions, upgrade gear, buy houses, take loans, and even evade debt collectors or headhunters. So it is more of an RPG, eh? dude. This is like such a like unclear stuff, dude. What what it is exactly? Yeah, here. Uh, we do be zooming. We do be zooming with them streaks there. The UI looks kind of like a very, a very indie. Let's put it that way. See. Yes, it does actually try to be the proper RPG and stuff there, All right? I mean, might be kind of interesting, I guess. Let's see what do I say? Huh? Offline play only. Well, that's a rare nowadays. That's a rare one nowadays, huh? Dolash. Sandbox RPG roguelike. Procedurally generated open world. Eh? Simulated history. Skill based progression system. Customizable abilities. Material based crafting. A building trading. And the possibility of total mayhem. That sounds like dang shit there. This got a lot of YouTubers. This one? Interesting. That seems like not exactly like super pog for content creators, to be honest. Unless it's obviously content creators of specific niche, our previous one. Wait, the Swarovski dream, you mean? Hmm, interesting. Gameforge? I mean, I guess. Could be, could be. Oh, the first Soul Ash, okay, I see. Uh, see. Getting this shit sacred. Let's see, let's see. Well, for some like the, the, the niche kind of content creators, I assume, yeah, that could be quite good. It does seem way to think for your like average uh, uh, YouTuber, I guess. Let's put it that way. Doesn't seem very pog eh? in terms of, you know, the ADHD audience and stuff. 
guys very vocal on Twitter, I see. And I mean, that's, that's a good thing, though. That's a good thing. Gotta learn. Gotta learn to be vocal on Twitter there. See when do I say? Getting that free copy there. Why not? Why not? Pika Unit Dreams. And that sounds uh, psychedelic. Yeah, that's a good description, I guess. That's a good description. A roguelike blend of Bullet Heaven Horde Survival and Bullet Hell gameplay. Craft ridiculous and overpowered builds and drift across the endless void. You must uh, fend off thousands of uh, nightmarish and otherworldly creatures. Don't forget, you were transmission interrupted. This gives me the... what's the name? The organ trading... Organ trader simulator vibes uh, mixed with a little bit of... Uh, uh, what, was, what was the name? The, uh, the, the, the corpus stuff. And what was the name? MKHP. Doing good, man. Doing good. How are you, sir? Man, what was the name of that one? The Dink... The Dink 6, man. Yeah, the Cruelty Squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. It's gonna be something shit, I guess. All right. Slithers. Then just the snow racing. In the early axis, I see. A wicked. European vacation sim. Well, you will need to find some snow in Germany for that. In the, in these amounts, man. Maybe in some regions, I guess. Stellaris Nexus. I bet it is. Huh? We'll see how this will end up. Early access, though, like, bro. Come on, man. Simultaneous turn-based multiplayer for X a game. It's not gonna be like multiplayer focused, alright. Stellaris Stellaris on steroids. All in about one hour. Insane. Stellaris on speed rather, I guess. Island song, eh? The venture through Scottish Highlands, all right. An open platforming, dynamic storytelling, and maps and music. The wholesome game is there, I see. Oh, I think we saw the, the announcement of that one, I remember. Something like that. That's gonna be the adventure. Not exactly my jam there. Chess Arama. Collection of chess inspired puzzle and strategy games. Um. To use chess pieces and their established movesets. I see. It then reimagines their goals and uh, theme. Is, um. Solve challenges, unlock collectibles, compete against each other on the leaderboards. Mm, I like how the chess kind of became the, the meta once again. For like a few years already, all over the place. That's good. Now it's all different takes on them, chess. Why not? Why not? I love to see it, man. Mm, 
the chess Netflix series. I think it started like a long ago already. When like streamers started to uh, to try to get to get good on chess. And then like the chess dedicated streamers also got like popular off of that wave. And then it just kind of like, you know, started going in circles. Uh, to the point you have like XQC playing on some chess tournament and stuff. Now that's the meta. This seems kind of like similar to like Anvil Saga, I guess. Different, but kinda. This one has like actual platforming and everything, though, I see. This on Game Pass, I see. 5th of December, it's not out yet, though. But that's alright, that looks okay. I might do Animal Saga, we'll see. It will be on Game Pass, alright. But it's not actually there yet. Okay, I thought that maybe they released there earlier or something. I mean, you never know. Them Kingpin Reloaded there. Eh? I'll get this on Game Pass or something. It's 3D Realms, eh? come on, man. Send it, send it. Them Interplay actually is a publisher, holy shit. Still, that's the name you don't hear often nowadays. Eh? Kingpin was quite, quite something. Like the only, the only thing it was like famous back back in the day, in our places, was pretty much that the uh, the translation had like a lot of swearing and everything. And uh, that was kind of rare back then, especially. But for us as kids, that was kind of like, dude, what the fuck? He said that. OG was banned to Germany, I say. Yeah, gosh. 3D Realms. 3D Realms recently is kind of like pumping a lot of like boomer shooters and stuff. If anything, it's about like interplay. Like, dude, that one is gone. Duke Nukem guys, yeah. Those are the ones. Used to be, at least. But yeah, now they're just like pumping a lot of boomer shooters there and doing pretty well there. Some platforming stuff there too. Yeah, 3D Realms Classics. Coltic is there still, yeah. They they found their niche. Kingpin never really good, as I said. Like back then, I think for us, it was just kind of like the. Kind of like, you know, like. Manhunt or something in a way, but the Manhunt was like completely turned, you know, up to 11 there. And this was kind of like a little bit milder Manhunt, but still kind of popular for the same reason, you know. It's just kind of like, you know, with all unfiltered, I guess, with swearings and stuff. And that's that's the main reason why it was kind of like, damn, son. Not sure if there was any like more. Redeeming qualities. Probably just like nowadays, probably would just like roll as your your average boomer shooter or something. No problems. I would assume. Wait, who Akira? Sword, old on sword, eh? A feeling, then. Who would that be? The venture RPG is set in the beautiful world inspired by 8-bit classics. The pointless wedding, I say. Most of the stuff you were like hearing in translation, especially back then, it was always like super PG. I think it still is really in many games, except for like Witcher and maybe a few other ones. Their translation localization is actually good. But most official translations were always kind of like super PG. 
That's why hearing something dink was uh, uh, was impressive. Three huh? D realms, I see. Well, I mean, they're just gonna show you more boomer shooters and stuff. That's probably it. Gems there. Get lost train home doing good. Eh? That's nice. That's nice. Demo was super good. Pretty good game. A battle band's a rock and roll deck builder. Then, son. There was already one, I remember. We played like as, as a band. Eh? I think it was like a demo or something. Was it out or not? That one had like some giga graphics and stuff too, I think. This one doesn't seem that giga, but still. Also very positive there, right? A CD2 Trapmaster. Saw that one before, I think. And play your deck of little uh, traps. I see. That one is also farming. Yeah, 13th of November, we surely saw. Heroes wanted. Uh, new of his. Uh. Peace on prayer, hello. How are we doing? Deck building roguelike combines simplicity with strategic depth. Innovative mechanics and engaging rules, and must try for genre enthusiasts. See, that's the call to action you utilize. Must try for genre enthusiasts. I write it down. Subordinate's war. Now that's now, now that seems like kind of mobile stuff, if anything. Someone is all around the world, then Sky Arena. 1500 monsters to claim victory. The epic adventure with your monsters. Enough purchases. You know, I got it, I got it. Bigger now. Eh? Bigger now. Eh? Guild content and stuff, yeah, alright. That's a mobile indeed, eh? Terra cards, eh? Form, sell, learn, repeat. Tactical, a roguelike deck builder, you manage your own farm. Utilize edibles, crops, and structures through cards, eh? Transforming them into valuable resources and wealth with each turn. Beware, deplete your funds, and it's game over. Decent reviews, and a lot of them, too, even. All of the cards, man. Unlock celestial crops. Well, it looks kinda alrighty though. The big builder there, yeah. Another bed. Rush the industry. The, the, the Cooper baiting there and everything. Okay, way to the top big game studio. This roguelike deck builder inspired by classic GRPGs. The sun. Just pumping all the, all the deck builders there. All of them. This kind of reminds me of like a little bit of a, like run gore or something, but I guess not. Not really there. Yeah, the Rangorum. Rangor was a nice game. Can return to that one too. Got new characters and stuff there. Be 
people be happy with this, I guess. More stuff unlocked the weaker my runs became. Uh, that actually in, in some roguelikes that is an option. I was like in Dead Cells, I remember. If you do like some speed runs or something, you kind of want like a separate. Or want to go on some like challenge run in high difficulty. You need like the separate account or something that doesn't have any unlocks. Because like the more the more stuff you unlock, the higher chances to uh, get something useful, uh, useless dropped. You kind of only want to get things that you kind of want to, uh, to drop to you. A gatekeeper. Didn't see this one before. Up to four friends. Oh, yeah, this one has a prologue that was really popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember now. And the prologue of this one was pumping hard. Remember, I remember. A Brawl Tactics Origins. Deck building roguelikes in the tactics RPG genre like never before. Your units collect valuable trinkets and cast powerful spells to ensure victory. Tactical deck building, I see. It's pretty good, eh? 31st of August, the 20 reviews, though, kind of sad, yeah? And yeah, I feel like the, the, the bullet here doesn't really yeah, work that well. It doesn't really tell you much about the game, eh? Uh, the early axis. A million monster militia. Damn son. The way to think. Assemble ragtag army. Liberate the barrier from big boss demons. Create game breaking synergies. Eh? Damn son. That's some dinkness right there. So the game breaking synergies do kind of work if you want. Sadly, not pumping super crazy since August, but yeah, no. I see the pain game there. That's a good. That's a good progress then. Draft the darkness. Damn, I just like played some deck builders, and there you go. You get like some dankness there. Holy shit! Well, all the dankness with deck building too, though. But yeah, here's the deck building horror for you too. Survival horror RPG with deck building. And roguelike dungeon exploration. Insane. Now we have the horror game that they're probably not gonna play. Huh? I don't see it here. Manage your limited resources and explore procedurally generated maps. Determine the story's outcome. There's some dang stuff, alright. Chromos of Evil 2. A Lovecraft inspired RTS survival. For the second time. RTS survival. How does that go? Let's 
Seems kind of more like some, some rim world or something instead. Huh? <laughs> I see secret, I see. Insane chroma so evil. I mean, yeah, that's some dang stuff there for sure. Maybe not for everybody. This game was five bucks. You probably say it's worth it. It's not a terrible game, but it's absolutely not worth 16.75. There it is. There is the logic. Corrupted save that. The early axis that's fine is then, alright. Classic, classic. Alright, let's see how the story is then. A real Kavik. Time, time is getting kind of tight there a little. Turok 3 Remastered, then, son. It's quite the price, though. I got the one and only. I remember those, I remember those. My friend was super into Turok back in the day. Kind of never really got into it myself, though. The remastered up to 4K. 120 FPS, then what not 144? What is this? Scuffed. The night dive again, I see. Night dive pumping the boomer stuff. And the quasi morph. Oh, there it is. Eh? Claim a raw Semper goodie pack. The goody pack there, though. So wallpapers concept art, and then you also kind of by claiming that you agree that uh, they're gonna email you stuff, marketing communications. Uh, should you really for screenshots and everything in the wallpapers? Let's see, see, see. Always collect. Maybe, maybe. I mean, fine. Sure, I guess. Why not? They already be sending me some discounts and everything. Not like I'm gonna stop them. Here is Visordum. The Visordum was very nice. We played on Friday. A lost three in the home, they're cheap, I see. Yeah, you just feel like it's getting like more and more expensive. Every time you see a little bit more. There's the dungeon keepers for you. The boy in his blob, eh? The son. What a name. Warhammer 40k Gladius Drukari. Damn, they keep pumping. Holy shit. Eight bucks for this. It's like just a few units or something, probably. So, what are we buying for eight bucks there? Oh, there's a whole race there, right? 
Ancient race that fell into degeneracy and depravity. I see. Well, yeah, they, that's at least that's at least something. That's at least something there. Yeah, Arkham Knight apparently is kinda running not very good. Well, I mean... Who would have thought? Who would have thought? At least they got the new Batman skin in, so... Worth... Not exactly. Alright, let's get them news going. So not running good to not running good, eh? Well, I mean, not b barely running, I would say, even. Going down to, like, 1 FPS or something. That's a bit too dank. A little too dank. Alright, let's go. Silent Hill 2 Remake progressing smoothly, says Bloober Team in update. Ask for fans' patience in regard to new information on the game while stating that development is going according to schedule. Had I been on Silent Hill 2 Remake last October, with the lengthy trailer showcasing the One Classics updated presentation. No release window will launch on PlayStation PC. Alright, so they got all the whole statement there. The whole statement posted just to say that it's all good, alright. See you, Axel, I say, yeah? Time to get him. Time to get him. I get them puns there, huh? Look kinda dank indeed, eh? Kind of dank indeed, eh? Marvel Snap will continue to operate despite reports of publisher Nuvers restructuring. Eh? Chinese company ByteDance is best known for its ownership of TikTok, an international video platform, but it owns a number of other companies as well. One of those companies is Nuvers, game publisher best known in the West for its work on Marvel Snap. Fans of uh, the superhero car battler had reason uh, for concern this morning, as an article from uh, Reuters reported that ByteDance had the plans to leave the gaming space entirely, with intentions to divest from titles already launched. This seemed to spell doom for Marvel Snap. But the official Marvel Snap account issued a statement today, and the dear snappers. And express their concerns regarding reported structural changes at Newverse. We wish to thank you for your concern and assure you that regardless of any changes at Newverse, Snap will continue to operate and flourish in the future. I see. The mobile games? Nope, not really. Like, the only ones I like recently, I guess, was the, the Honkai Star Rail. When I was like away from home and did want to do some dailies when I was still playing early summer and stuff, I did install it. And that was pretty much it. That was pretty much it. I guess like some Hearthstone in the time is immemorial, you know, a long, long, long time ago. See some prayers. See, now it's not dying, it's just the, the publisher is uh, getting restructured and just like everything on the market right now. But I mean, I doubt it. All it was kind of successful, and I mean, it's Marvel license and stuff, right? So I don't think they're just gonna, you know, pee pee poof or something all of a sudden. See, I'm not really into mobile gaming, to be honest. Not much. Destiny, the final shape, delayed to June. Another one. Culmination of the first 10 years of Destiny storytelling and the Forgotten Everywhere, countless hours spent together. I want to honor that journey, so we're taking the time we need to deliver an even bigger and bolder vision. One uh, that we hope will be remembered and treasured for years to come. I'll see. Count and roadmap changes. Mm, 
Yeah, Bungie ex upcoming extraction shooter marathon been pushed to 2025 also. That the lady didn't confirm yet though. We'll see, we'll see. A years to come, indeed. Yo, snub, by the way, some prayer. That one I kinda wanted to try though. I'm kinda interested in how they did this, like, you know, simultaneous kinda turns and uh, how did they make it more dynamic. Yeah, well, not gonna watch the whole trailer because of the music there and stuff, and I don't know in general how Amazon and stuff gonna take it, but we can watch some screenshots, I guess. It is like my main concern, like, dude, why? Why, like, Brotherhood of Steel, you get them this fucking shit assault rifle from Fallout 4 and 76. Like, at least, like, mod it or something, you know, so it looks a bit better. It's like Brotherhood of Steel, and you gave them, like, some sort of, like, scuffed, like, maxi machine gun or something from, like, early 20th century. Just in handheld format, dude. The, you know, like, the... The enjoyers, obtainers, and guardians of technology. And you get them the fucking little shit made of some sort of, like, moonshining machine, you know? Moonshine, uh, uh, like, retort and everything. Like, why? Why? Like, the, the laser gun or something. Plasma. Mini gun, dude. That would be good. Like, you even, you even have, like, you know, the... The servos. You have the power armor. Just, like use it for something good the water cooled better yeah I guess it's supposed to be the the alcohol cooled barrel but alcohol usually never survived huh? God looks nice to you I mean it's okay but like for brotherhood I don't like it I don't know it just looks weird huh? I mean, it, it looks good overall, right? But, like, even in game, I don't really like how it looks. It looks weird to me always. It's kind of like something jury rigged, you know? Something, like, homemade. Which is fine for Fallout, but, like, not for Brotherhood of Steel, man. Brotherhood of Steel should have, like, the top tier shit there. That's their point, you know, in general. I see some prayer, I see. That sounds good. Eh? That sounds nice. Yeah, it's mostly like the screenshots. Yeah, the ghouls are kind of like super, super mellow there. Just yeah, like some like sunburned dude with no nose. Eh? All right. Where's Harold, man? Like completely rotten and uh, you know falling apart there. They yeah, got some. Uh, a local, a local a little pretty vendor, I guess. All right. Overall, kind of all right though. I don't, I don't really mind. Eh? I kind of even don't mind if it's just gonna be like pure fun service and just garbage overall. Like we actually had fun watching the Twisted Metal. It was a complete garbage show, by the way. Also, don't really have much to do with Twisted Metal, but it was, it was kind of like so bad it was actually funny to watch. So I don't even mind if it's just going to be a bunch of fun service. Having something good would be better, though. But you know, like since since the man the man the legend is overseeing it, and what Bethesda did with Fallout series, I kind of don't have a lot of super expectations there. Character is just called the ghoul, or uh, I see. And the race bits were fun, all two of them, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the show, the first season, I guess, is just kind of like the setup for the actual, like, races and stuff, right? Seems like they just at the end of the season show, you know, the, the actual stuff. So, like, season two, I guess, should have the actual thing from the game. But, yeah, not sure. We'll, we'll see if they will get the season two there. Close way to clean for living in the wasteland. Well, Brotherhood should be like that. Like they should be, you know, yeah, clean, polished, all nice and everything. With the, with the, with the super, you know, high tech weaponry and stuff too, preferably. That's nice. That's how it should be. Like if it would be like some raider with that with that weapon, I would be fine with that. Whatever. But like for Brotherhood, I just kind of feel it's like out of place. 
But it always, like, like that gun in general, like, I don't know, like, in Fallout 4, I never, like, it looked kind of weird for me all the time. When you got, like, a bunch of mods on it, it looks better, though. Like, and it gets a bit, like, more detail on, you know, on the barrel and stuff, and it becomes kind of a little, like, looking better. But yeah, we'll see, I guess. We'll see. I... That one I uh, would have watched. Beyond Good and Evil, a 20th anniversary edition arrives early next year. So, are we actually are really uh, getting uh, this one? Four K graphics and sixty FPS. Where's my one twenty? It's one forty four. Good boy, man. Got the four K though. Yeah, they're gonna probably try to sell it for a shitload of money too. I assume it's Ubisoft. So we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Sell the remaster for 50 bucks. Yep, hey Corsad. The Warhammer 40 key sneak peek. Yeah, that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. Trailer for the next uh, GTA uh, Auto Premieres Tuesday, December 5th. So they decided to just kind of like cock uh, Geoff completely, I guess. Just do their own thing. Don't want to be the part of some event or show. We're just going to announce it ourselves. I mean, I guess kind of makes sense. And the trailer one. We'll see, we'll see. That we're gonna see. I see, Steve. All right. They can afford it. True. Well, I mean, if anything, like it's it's nice to participate on the event for the extra hype. But yeah, I think they're just gonna like. I mean, like they, they, this already 1.8 million likes there. Like they they probably just gonna be better off not having anything, you know, any other informational noise around, just like separately. This is our shit. That's it. The leak story, like there, there was, there was something. I, 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 there, was, there was something, but I think something was also kind of said that it wasn't true. So I don't know. Like all, like the leaks, the leaks are all over the place. True, bro. True. Announcement of an announcement, yeah. Well, I mean, there was also, like, announcement for that announcement already, so, you know. Head of Devison leaked footage on TikTok. Devison, I see. I think, I think there was something like that, like... I think I saw something. I think it said that it was like not true or something. I think I seen something on like Insider or whatever. It was like kind of news and then it was like marked as not true or something. I'm not sure like that. I kind of didn't, didn't put that one in, I think. Yeah, one second. Uh, what was that? Like one game. Oh yeah, this one. Let's see what that was. Uh, Ori. Son, what is this? Ah. Ori, and then they sell all maps and modding as a DLC. Interesting. That's one way to approach it, I guess. And these for free. Does look all right. Does that look all right? Twenty fifth of November, pretty fresh and reviews are nice.
I'm really bad at teaching you how to play the game, damn son. 0 0.2 hours. Like, bro. <clears throat> Relax. What you, what you even, like, expect in, like, 12 minutes there. Pretty much, Stevia, yeah, pretty much. Free version includes unlimited access to over 12 plus multiplayer scenarios and chapter 1 a single player campaign, I see. The DLC gets you access to the game. Everything for single player including story campaign, skirmishing against the AI, online multiplayer, a LUN, a play with friends and family, alright. Insane. Yet yeah, waiting for all the mobs is quite, quite chunky for everything, true. But I mean, it seems kinda interesting. Let me see about this like TikTok stuff. I thought that I thought I saw an insider that said it was not the case there. Something that was uh, kind of sus there. But wasn't it? Was it this one? Alleged GTA 6 gameplay footage has leaked online, or has it? Yeah, footage originally uploaded by a TikTok user who has since made his account private. Footage in question had been made the rounds on Twitter, which apparently shows off the scale of the new GTA 6 map. A footage below, which we're not gonna watch because you know the leaks and stuff, you can get fucked over that stuff. Currently unable to verify that the footage is legitimate, but comparisons online have shown that the city matches that of the leaked footage from last year. Possible that the user could have made a fake based on these leaks. However, user had also uploaded a picture of himself and who appeared to be Aaron Garbett as proof of their claims. Started gaming around the image through various reverse image search engines, which determined the image was original to the internet, but doesn't mean it's a fake by AI ATC. Shouldn't be worth noting. Should be worth noting that although there have been claims in line about Rockstar Games DMCAing the footage, Insider Gaming has not been able to verify any DMCA claim. In fact, due to original user privatizing his account rather than it being deleted or removed, it could suggest that this is an elaborate fake. We'll update as we hear more. So, who knows? Who knows? As usual, with many leaks, might be. It might be all just someone messing around, especially with like such huge game as GTA 6. I wouldn't be surprised. People will decide to do some giga trolling. And I also assume that will be like the, the the son of the head dev or something. There probably would be already some reaction to that, right? And dude probably would get fucked over for that or something. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Cyberpunk 2077 is getting a fully functional metro and more with a 2.1 update. The metro is finally actually in. Insane. Card in the game lets players move around the city taking the views. A radio port will let players listen to music outside of vehicles. Update will also allow players to invite their in-game significant others to quality time together in these apartment. The other previously mentioned updates are a little more self-explanatory though. The CD project did specifically mention that the boss updates were specifically applied to the late game encounter with Adam Smasher. He's also now equipped with the Sun Devistan, which was seen in Cyberpunk Edge Runners. New vehicles will be added like the Porsche 911 Cabriolet and others. Motorcycle handling has been improved. Damn son. Also technical updates like larger fonts and the option to turn off timers in the Breach Protocol minigame. I see. Siego also teasing something for TGA. A revival of hyenas, yeah. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Well, good. I waited. Like, wait, waiting with big RPGs more only brings the good stuff. Like, Baldur's Gate getting shit there. Cyberpunk's getting stuff. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'll hope on it as soon as there's gonna be time. Are you here? Get out. 
Uh, let's see. Um, next. And the future, man. Uh, US kids want game subscriptions and virtual currency more than games this Christmas. Sage survey showed only 22% of US children surveyed want physical games for the holidays. Eh? Games related products for Christmas wanted by 72% of children. Subscriptions were the most popular gift idea, 39%, followed closely by consoles, 38%, games accessories, 32%, and in-game currency, 29%. Damn, in-game currency, dude. Yeah, that's totally not the best timeline to be in, man. Only 22% of children surveyed wanted physical games this Christmas. Well, physical games I can understand, though. Like, why? But, but the games in general, I'm down. The ESA also surveyed more than 500 adults for this study, which found that 1 in 3 plan to buy video games for themselves or others. 57% of parents considering buying video game related presents for their children. Game related products come out on top, beating other gift ideas such as money and gift cards, or technology like smartphones and smartwatches. Books were the lowest on the gift list at 26%. Now that's sad, dude. And the only 12 billion Americans play video games regularly, so it comes as no surprise that games are at the top of this year's wish list. The books, man. Book is the best gift. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Nowadays they're gonna be mad if you give them something like that. Uh, Read Pop seeks buyer for Eurogamer uh, Games Industry. Uh, VG 247, Rock Paper Shotgun, and more. Uh, UK events, EGX, and MCM will remain with Readpop. Well, more, more news websites and stuff getting getting the cut and everything seems like getting the short end of the stick. Sadly, yeah, given she is, it will be sad if it will be going. That would be very sad. Actually, actually, good news. Eh? Not included in the sale, UK Best Events, CGX and MC or MCM, or the digital brand the Popverse. Acquired Game Network in 2018, create the world's leading events and media group for the gaming community. Company already operated major shows including PAX and New York Comic Con. Yeah, then the COVID happened, I see. Sure the kids have e-readers, that's why no books, yeah. Kinda doubt it, kinda doubt it. I reviewed its UK business and decided to investigate potential sale for its gamer network and associated editorial digital properties. Believe that new ownership offers the best condition for the growth of the business. Well, we'll see where this is gonna lead. Eh? See where this is gonna lead. Um. They want to keep only the conventions. Well, COVID is over, so now the conventions are actually working again, I guess. I'm bringing something to them. EA Sports FC 24 back at number one for Black Friday week. UK box charts. FIFA Hogwarts Legacy. There is again nowhere to be found in any awards. Call of Duty, despite being Garbo. Super Mario, Spooderman, Jedi Survivor, I guess the sales, yeah, for Black Friday, Mortal Kombat 1, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Nintendo Switch Sports, there's your gifties there, there's what people gift in there seems like. Take to interactive sued over use of virtual currency and plaintiff highlights the non-transferable nature of virtual currency and 2K sports games. Complaint filed on November 17th in Federal Court of the Northern District of California, a minor represented by their parent is seeking equitable and non-monetary and monetary relief for themselves and those whose in-game currency was removed from a 2K Games account from November 17th, 2019 to the present. 
Games I mentioned included NBA 2K, WWE 2K, and PGA Tour 2K. A lawsuit argued that the publisher offers no reason or explanation for why it does not refund or allow transfer of these funds from its customer accounts, and that players are given no warning when they purchase in-game currency that this can happen. So what exactly did happen? I didn't get that really. Currency was removed from 2K Games account. So I guess like the the fact that they are not not transferable to like a newer game, the newer NBA, for example. Oh yeah, the servers for older titles are deactivated. Okay, I see. Well, I mean, asking the real questions. Problem is, it's probably kind of like they already probably have some something written about it in some of their like TOS or something. I'm pretty sure. Because that's what all of them do. Same with FIFA and everything. They buy all the stuff in one FIFA, the next FIFA is out, and whatever you spend money on is just useless anymore. Which is like super like weird system. I don't understand why people even like partake in that shit. Like if it'll be like the FIFA would have some sort of this like uh like framework on top of it, right? Like the the whatever it was called, like the career or not no not career. I forgot how it's called basically, like all the where all those uh, FIFA cards are being bought. Like if it'll be like overall the game is built over, right? So like the new game is out, but you already have your collection of like all the players and everything, for example, and it just kind of continues going from game to game and maybe some games add like some new like collectible cards, rare ones, you know, foil ones, I don't know. Like that would be at least somewhat understandable, right? Like game updated but all your purchases are still kind of there and you can make new ones fine that will be okay like monetization well it's still kind of like shit obviously right but like at least that kind of makes sense but yeah like you just like dump your money in and then like next year it's already gone and you know it the new fifa is out all your shit is like useless now Let's see steve i see the games with an expiration date yeah Basically, basically. That part I don't like. That part I don't like. NCSoft and Sony announce a team up. The online game publisher and entertainment firm are currently evaluating their opportunities. Partnering with NCSoft advanced our strategy to expand beyond console and broaden PlayStation's reach to a wider audience. Like SIE, NCSoft shares a similar vision in creating high-quality, impactful entertainment experiences for players everywhere, and together we're excited to collaborate to push the boundaries of gaming further. That's probably the one, uh, the Horizon MMO, because NCSoft is pretty much like MMO galore. The MMO galore. Uh, but... The thing is, NCSoft is also Korean studio and stuff, so they have like some giga grindy stuff mostly, and quite pay to win stuff too. Especially like some of the older, like Lineage, for example. Like Lineage was like back home, like super popular back then, but everyone was playing on like private servers. Then they opened the actual servers, and it's 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 insane. Like you want you want to play, you actually need to have like some budget that you spend every month. That that way that way you can kinda like play properly. If you want to like play in some like good guild or something, the clan or whatever, then you need like you have some like basically like some of the clans are recruiting by the amount you spend on the game. Like if you spend like five hundred bucks a month on the game, alright, you're welcome to like decent clan or something, you know. That's pretty much how it goes, huh? It's a ridiculous dude, huh? And that's kind of like how it like it goes in jail. People still play on private servers, basically. They even remember there was like this like Fiesta back then, like when uh, the con the same company that has the Ragnarok servers, actually European Ragnarok too, by the way, the same company. No wait, is it was it for uh, it's for a game, I think, right? Still, so I think so. yeah, I think it was for a game, right? And uh, I don't remember was it for a game or was it in Nova? But I think in Nova became for a game or something. I already forgot that was like. The, the, the long story over a long time 
But basically, like, they, they had, like, their own launcher for their MMOs and stuff, and that launcher has, um, the anti-cheat system, and that anti-cheat system was using your PC while the launcher is on to DDoS the private servers of their games, basically. That was quite, that was quite something. That was quite something. Uh, they did have that back in the day. Not sure if that changed. Uh. Yeah, basically you just have like the launcher playing like MMO on official server, and at the same time you kind of low key did helping to DDoS the private server because they had a hard time taking them down. Sometimes it is. That's why like Ragnarok, for example, has a lot of private servers. The lineage has like a shitload of private servers. And the private servers also kind of like became like pretty. Uh, uh, pretty like money grabbing and stuff nowadays. Like my friend's still playing with with his uh, with his friends group. They're regularly playing lineage. They basically just get like paid. Like they have a clan right going with friends, and they play decent amount. So they basically like the admins of the server that is opening. They pretty much just like contact all the kind of like known active clans they contact them and like yo guys you you want to play on our server we're gonna pay you that much you just need to play for some like amount of time and everything bring people from your clan in and stuff so they're just like paying they don't really pay like much to be honest and whatever they pay most likely will be spent on their server anyway so they just get a bunch of like you know clans that way then they contact content creators also who play lineage do the same pay them so they play on their server right so they just kind of like get this like hype launch hype you know a lot of people on the start and everything everyone's like dumping a bunch of money in and then like five a few months later like you know when the the, the contract sort is over everyone just start piecing out and they just kind of closing the server you know money already acquired and then after some time they open another one and it just kind of like goes on and on and on again like my friend already like every 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 year i think it's like kind of like a couple of times per year you probably hear that they're like starting on some new lineage server that's normal that's how they that's how they operate there east asia pc and mobile games market expect to hit 30 billions in 2023 uh, mobile and PC games revenue, uh, mobile and PC gamers, but we're more interested about the PC. Uh, non mobile, rather. PC games market in the region, uh, Korea. So Korea is our, is our boys there with PC. 55% revenue, over 45% gamers. Largest market in the region, uh, Japan. Over 60% of revenue and gamers. I see, Steve, I see. The Korea is the proper gaming. The rest is still going mobile, I guess. Didn't get any like breakdowns on the mobile. Yeah, PC and mobile. I want separate. I want to know the separate stuff. That's the interesting thing. Because mobile is huge there in Asia in general. Uh, fish labs to downsize to f by 50 rules. Um, decision adds to the ongoing list of those affected by Embracer Group's restructuring program. Embracer still going. Announcement said that attempts were made to avoid layoffs. However, financial backing of the studio's Project Black is and lack of approval could not curtail the decision. Fish labs will continue to create co-create projects in partnership with Embracer subsidiaries and play on. Each individual at our fish lab studio has been more than just a team member and been a vital part of our creative journey, bringing not only their skills but also passion and dedication for our theory project. And then they gone. Another one. But Embracer is kind of like rolling downhill pretty fast there, dude. I wonder if they will manage to get to the same situation as, you know, original THQ encountered. I wonder, hope not, kinda. Gamescom Alatam, launching in 2024. So Gamescom out of all the regions decided to go to Latin America. Interesting. 
Iglorious, hello. How are we doing? Trying to get a game dev job in Europe is not a great idea anymore. You'll need to like pick the studios there for sure. You'll need to find something. If anything, like kind of ironically, it actually kind of feels like a smaller kind of like indie games and stuff. Indie studios, they, they do kind of better in all this stuff. Now you get in some like Giga Corpa and they have, yeah, like we need the restructure. And like your studio maybe was doing good, but you know, we need the restructure means that you're also going to get shit on because, you know, everyone will get probably. It's just because they had some deal to fail or because they just acquired so much that they can sustain. <laughs> Time to get them cuts. Yes, yeah, so the Gamescom is going. First iteration will run from June 26th to 30th, 2024 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It is the product of partnership between a Gamescom organizer Köln Messe, German trade body game, a BIG festival, and pop culture and events firm Omelette Company. There you go. You want to play, you want to get the Gamescom? You can come to Brazil now too. I wonder if they also will try to make it a big deal in terms of like some announcements and stuff. That will be kind of like a bit too many events though, I feel. Holes of Torment game? Yeah, Holes of Torment. Holes of Torment already. It wasn't like a prologue sort of. Oh, there's prologue separate one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's prologue that is separate there. Yeah, the reviews are indeed bumping there. Well, more, more survivors liking for you there. Iranian. So you have vampire, a survivor is likes. Keep bumping there. Yeah, Brazil would be nice to go. Some events and everything. But expensive, expensive to go though. I'm not sure if my friends would mo want to move there or something. I haven't looked into Brazil though, I think. So I'm not sure exactly about the legislation there. But yeah, we were looking in Argentina. But you know, kind of kind of dankness going on there. And there was like so much, so many Russians going there that they also kind of started to tighten the screws around. Could be Steve, could be. A wet dream for Diablo 2 fans. Yeah, it does look kind of nice in that way, for sure. Indeed, Diablo. -y. IRL GT, unless you're in the gated communities. Uh, well, I mean, depends on the place and stuff. Yeah, sure, you need it. Like, whenever, wherever you are, really, almost, to be honest. <laughs> you need to know places that you shouldn't visit. That's pretty much everywhere. And some basically, you know, like uh, rules. As in like kind of being careful around, you know, walking with the with the phone in your hands and stuff, you know, those kind of things. That's the usual. It's nice here though. Here it's actually a very safe, very nice. Embracer to officially close Time Splitter Studio. Sources claim internal emails shows a free radical design is on a pace to shut down on December 11th. And I think they confirmed it already, so Time Splitter's gonna be gone probably. Even in Sweden, yeah, I did, like even here, I think Leov said, like in Yerevan, like, Yere, like Yere, Armenia is actually really high up in the like safety and security rating, which is cool. As I said, there's like you know people not closing cars and stuff and everything, and apartment doors might be open easily too. Like it's pretty chill. But yeah, I think Leov even said like in Yerevan, like some some districts and stuff, you probably kind of rather avoid. But that's everywhere. I feel you can find places like that. It's just like, you know, in some countries it might be not the districts, it might be like the whole cities or something that you rather avoid. 
but still there's probably a lot of places that you just uh, uh, just want to stay away from Yudan Chronicles haven't played haven't played don't know here we go and hello you don't need to lay off another 265 staff drop a beta in company reset firm will also shut down offices in 14 locations and no longer mandate that employees work on site for three days a week well, at least another victory for work from home unless you got you know in the list of 265 that got uh, completely no job now that's a bit worse Yeah, just acquired all the stuff in 2021 for 1.63 billion. Now they're just ditching it and stuff. Yeah, yeah, looks like they might. Closing offices in Berlin and Singapore. Significantly reducing the footprint of the remaining branches, including Bellevue, Washington, and its San Francisco headquarters. Well, I mean, San Francisco probably do be quite expensive. Currently, you offer due to AI or not? I, I, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. The current layoffs is because the economy in the world is in shit. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, there was like a huge boost to the industries through, uh, through the COVID times. When everyone was sitting home and buying games and playing games. Everyone got some giga profits. Everyone gets some money running around. Investors dumping all the money. Especially when, you know, like... A lot of economy started to go to shit. And a lot of people started investing into more, you know, feasible things. And there was also this, like... Uh, notion that, you know, game industry survived all the all the crises before and stuff survived the covid and stuff so game industry is very uh reliable game industry is uh, you know hard to hard to sink and well i mean and then then they kind of got proved otherwise yeah it's hard to pinpoint there's like a lot of a lot of things and then I think it's also kind of, you know, people just realize, all right, everyone started firing people, you know, we got an excuse to do so too. So look, look at them like firing people and still working and stuff. So maybe we should also do that. And everyone started doing their own evaluations and stuff. And that gets like way less of a, a backlash and everything because, well, everyone is firing, you know, we're not the only ones, so... So yeah, basically after overhiring, over acquiring like this, everyone just started to decrease. And yeah, like it's, it has nothing really, like not much maybe to do with the AI because like, for example, like the, the, the TikTok company just completely closing their gaming business, right? Probably nothing to do with AI. They just kind of like divesting from something they thought would be profitable, but it wasn't. Same with Unity again here, right? They just acquired like a whole a whole bunch of stuff and then now they're just ditching that stuff probably also doubt it's gonna be because of the AI or something so yeah you need to refer to these announcements as part of a reset for the company with interim CEO Jim Whitehurst telling Reuters uh, well no additions have been finalized it's clear that we will reduce the number of things we're doing overall Look at Amazon, yep. Well, that's the thing. It's also kind of like... Like, it's it's hard to establish, like, instantly, like, at the, at the top and with the big size of, like, like, big scale, right? Like, it's easier if you go from the bottom, right? You start, like, publishing, like, some smaller games, right? Investing money in, like, smaller studios and smaller games, you know, promoting, like, building up. Like, no one has time for that, right? We have, like, billions, so how about we just, like, dump, like, a shitload of money and just kind of, like, brute force through all this process right at the top? Doesn't really work that way. At least not always. At least not always.
Hey, Ben Tropy. Making an actual good game helps as well. Well, that's the thing. It's not that you can like, well, let's make a good game, guys. We have a lot of money. Let's make a good game. Doesn't work like that. You can even have like the good people and everyone around. And doesn't mean that you can make a good game. Just, you know, it's not that simple. It could be that simple. We would have a lot of good games around. Or the only good games. But because who would ever like, yo, guys, we have a lot of money. Let's make a bad game. Yeah, let's do it, bro. It sounds like a cool idea. Fun. The resources to hire veterans. Well, I mean, what was the name? The kind of like this like MOBA-ish thingy that died very fast. Like, they like got the whole studio, I think, with some sort of like pedigree to do that with a bunch of people that did other stuff before, right? And that kind of just flopped instantly. See, it's kind of like everyone wants to, like, get in somewhere closer to the top and make it, like, big. Like, everyone wants to skip, like, the work. Building it up, you know, climbing the ladder. They just want to get at the top and instantly drop some, like, the big project that's also going to be, like, you know, big money. So they go in the top with a lot of money and they're like, well, let's make, like, some competitor from... Or some like super meta game now, right? Like back in the day, it was like MOBAs, right? When Epic came in with the... Uh, what was the name? I forgot about that. The, the one that is got, getting getting ripped by in in uh, by, a, by a bunch of companies now making their own ripoffs, basically. The MOBA one, right? The Paragon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Epic got in like this. Then there was like all these like... The hype around, like, everyone tried to make their own battle royale, everyone tried to make their own MOBA, like Heroes of the Storm, for example, right? All those things. And that's even, like, sometimes studios that are already in the gaming market, right? They already kind of built the reputation, built the experience and stuff. They're not new, they're not just trying to brute force, they're just trying to, like, kind of follow the trends and it doesn't work. Now imagine if you go from the side when you have no idea what you're doing, that's probably not, not no amount of money will help you. And yeah, like when you get in with like a huge company with a lot of investments, you want to make a lot of money back too, right? Kind of need to. And it's expensive like to stall too much. So yeah, I feel like starting like now nowadays, especially and everything, like starting from the bottom might be a little, a little better. Take a while, sure. But especially if you have money to last for a while, then that would probably work in the long run. But yeah, no one has the long run. Especially if it's CEOs and stuff coming in, right? Like, they don't do that work themselves. They're not connected to the product themselves. It's not going to be their name, basically. They just want results, right? They want to invest money. They want to make money. So they want it here and now. They don't want to start building up from, from the bottom. The celebrity dev projects that not going anywhere. Yeah, basically, basically. The Amazon, to some extent, wasn't too bad, though. Like, the Amazon, like, they, they did, uh, like, the big miss with that kind of, like, 3D MOBA thingy. But, like, New World ended up being alright. Sure, init initially... Well, actually, initially, it was actually a big success. Like, it sold, like, like, crazy. The online was insane, right? Just had no longevity. But then they kind of did the patches. Boom. Again, a lot of people. It was good. Then again, another miss now with the uh, with the DLC though that is like way too expensive for what it is, and back again to merging servers and having not a lot of online probably until next time they come up with something. Even veterans don't mean much. Yeah, I do. I do think so. I do think so. I think it's a lot of, like, you, you never know from which department the veterans are, right? Like, they could be, like, some sort of, like, producers or something, and they basically kind of were good at managing the team. So if they try to make something on their own and the team is not good, then, I mean, they, they don't have a lot of, you know, impact on that. 
Like if it was some like writer, you know, like game designer, artist, then you can kind of expect them having like a lot of impact, I feel, on the quality of the product. Let's see Pentropius say, yeah. Did it again the New World recently? Wait, who did they ban in New World? No, they fucked up with the, with the DLC though, like it wasn't that good. Huh? Yeah, like I mean, I mean, Callist, Callisto is exactly that. Callisto got like big, rich publisher, right? got some like names from the industry and tried to do something and yeah then it didn't really go that well didn't really go that well copy pasted the whole cities in the new world well i mean just kind of like almost an idiom mmo <laughs> like some random like villages on your path with, uh, ridden with mobs usually are pretty much the same Next. Uh, Genvid denies using AI to write Silent Hill Ascension. CEO Jacob Navak says zero words are authored by LLMs or AI following allegations from players. That was the interactive movie share, right? Or something? NPC who says he's been a uh, berry hunting confirms he has seen something strange in the woods but does not elaborate and returns to hunting for berries. Does not elaborate and returns hunting like the, the well, what's what's AI about it? I mean, it's just like PPG writing, but or like they're not even writing, I guess, just like NPCs being PPG. Big berries, goodbye, yeah. See, stay all right. No, it feels like Chat GPT in the clip. I say, yeah. Warden Ascension written by real people, and many of whom have long running careers in their writing, including Telltale titles, Pixar titles, God of War, Ragnarok, Res Resident Evil Village, and more. Across a hundred thousand plus words, zero authored by LMs or AI, that all from dedicated work of a talented team. Eh, somewhat maybe like for some random like blurts or something. Someone maybe decided a little to, uh, you know, cut some corners. Genvid previously runs tests to see if the technology could improve animation or cinematic production, but concluding that the results were not great and resulted in a lot of repetitive movements. Team of animators, team of writers, all right. Genevit continues to experiment with AI in detecting offensive usernames when accounts are registered, which is working to an extent, but still not perfect. Let's see. Let's see, Ultan, all right. Over the formal and detached, all right. Frontier reduces revenue targets, refocusing on Sims. There it is. Decision follows a lower than expected sales of Warhammer Age of Sigmar Realms of Ruin. And the thing is, like, game is actually not bad. Like, I mean, I was I was kind of thinking that it will not do, like, well. But, like, 
not like financially but in terms of reviews but if anything reviews are good actually campaign apparently is pretty good like maybe not super perfect in terms of like the gameplay that i didn't like that much but like overall was solid but still didn't sell though that's the thing Mainly because of the price, I see. Refocusing on creative management simulations, which tend to deliver stronger and more predictable returns for Frontier. Well, that's that's the state of gaming industry, the industry for you. Something works good, but we're refocusing on that. Like, no risks. Like, super risk-averse environment, basically. I mean, can't blame them, though. You know, like, when you when you run business, like, not just run business, but, yeah, like, people, right? Like, do you want to do some, like, layoffs? You know, cut some people in some roles? Or you just, like, you know, bite it and just do another, like, simulation instead of, like, something new? I guess... I see what I see. Yeah? And another one. After cancellation of Hyenas, Creative Assembly will hone in on RTS games. Sega's Koichi Fukuzawa said that the developer took on a challenge of developing an online FPS. Creative Assembly was good at offline games in the RTS genre, but they took on the challenge of developing Hyenas, an online game in the FPS genre. However, although the game itself was good, Copium, we decided to cancel the development of Hyenas because we did not think it would reach a quality that would satisfy our users when we considered whether we could really operate this as competitive online game for a long period of time. The Warhammer turn based? Yep. Well, I mean, that's like the combat, I guess, is real time. Yeah, Total War series developed by Creative Assembly amassed 43.4 million units in sales and downloads since its 2000s debut. And another one just going back to the stable, the stable roots. Sega says the Sonic Superstar sales weaker than expected. The company noted the, the impact of Super Mario Bros. Wonders release. Sonic IP sells more during the holiday period, and that's where 90% of titles, mar titles marketing cost will be spent. Believe that the impact of another company's major title releasing at the same time is significant, but we plan to expand the promotion towards the holiday season, especially in the overseas market. Both the Metacritic score and user score are higher than Sonic Frontiers, and we would like to continue to sell firmly. Yeah, I guess it's all about them battles, eh? Xbox working with unknown partners on a mobile store, says Bill Spencer. Microsoft's plan to open a mobile storefront were made public last October. Well, Epic is gonna be happy, probably. Someone else is gonna try to get into the mobile market and... Uh, a ruined the comfy spot for for Apple and Android, I guess. Apple and Google, eh? Yeah, to rival App Store and Google Play. That's good though, more competition for sure. Talked about choice and today on your mobile phones, you don't have choice. To make sure that Xbox is not only relevant today but for the next 10, 20 years. We're going uh, to have to be strong across many screens. Um, uh, for the when store will launch, I uh, didn't think it was multiple years away and instead would be sooner than that. Next generation game store which operates across range of devices including mobile. Referred to as uh, the Xbox mobile platform. Then they get the game pass on board with that too. That will be that will be quite quite the power play, I say. 
especially if there's cloud and everything involved too. EA open sources photosensitivity analysis technology. The Iris tool has been tested on titles such as Madden NFL 24 and EA Sports FC 24. That's nice of them. The open one offers users an analysis to check content for flashing lights or rapidly changing spatial patterns. It aims to be used by developers early on in their development cycles. Iris has been tested on titles such as uh, Madden NFL, eSports, eSports WRC, Spare UK's Epilepsy Society and U US Epilepsy Foundation. At least 5% of the 50 million people globally of epilepsy are photosensitive. Let's continue to build on that pledge uh, by open sourcing our photosensitivity tool Iris and opening up the use of additional patented technology which could help players with motor, cognitive, visual and or other disabilities have a smoother game experience. Additionally, EA is creating technology from four patents that will be royalty free. Back in 2021 it announced its accessibility first patent pledge with the, the goal to meet the needs of a diverse gaming community. That's good, eh? The open source tool is, um... Another one. Phoenix Labs lays off 34 staff. Fay Farm and Dauntless developer makes second round of layoff... Uh, round of cuts this year. Another one. The rigorous review we made the decision to change the structure of our support teams and we have made the tough decision to reduce our workforce by a total of 34 people across our publishing hr it and shared services teams the games teams were unaffected and our work continues across our titles at phoenix labs be honest like when you look at all the layoffs and stuff like if you want to go in the game dev studio to work right as a developer you most likely will be fine but everyone in QA, marketing, all that stuff, then you're gonna get fucked probably. Then you probably have a high chance of getting fucked. Oh, and another one in this one too. Bandai Namco denies using AI in the latest Naruto title. Publisher refuted the claims as soon after users shared concerns online about dialogue in the brawler. Then even Bandai Namco. Publisher said it will be working on a fix for in-game dialogue that users and voice actors took notice of. Regarding the reports about several voiceover lines in Naruto X Baruta Ultimate Ninja Storm connections, Bandai Namco Entertainment can confirm that the lines in question were not AI generated, but a result of inconsistencies during the editing and mastering process. What a name, yeah. <laughs> if you want to recommend it to someone, probably. Try to explain to your friends what it is. Eh? The voice acting they considered bad. Eh? Mill Flanagan, the voice actress behind the titular, titular character Naruto, shared in a now deleted tweet that she did not perform a certain line in that manner. Damn son, already deleted though. Already deleted. She wasn't alone, as voice actor Michael Schwalbe, who voices the character Kawaki in the anime and Naruto x Baruta game, waded in. He also said he didn't recall voicing a line shared on social media from the game. That's a lot of them. A lot of them there. Wait, where is it? What is it? All right. Did that wake you up? Yeah, that that does sound like editing. True. That is the other uh, thing. You can you can hear that in uh, actually Starfield also quite a lot too. Like you can like have the dialogue and then like one piece of the dialogue just like sounds kind of like it was recorded completely like different way, you know, like in different environment or something. Hey, pony. Hey, next gen. Hello, guys. So yeah, I think it is actually kind of like the the editing. 
But the fact that they, the voice actors say that they didn't record some of the lines that they heard, that's kind of weird. That could be also, you know, like some of like the simple lines could be just like maybe they didn't like AI then they tried to like took like you know some different sound clips from some other, uh, you know, lines and then just like merge them together to make a new one. I don't know, I guess kind of also weird use of the voice actor's, uh, you know, voice. But I don't know. I don't know how how the law handles that. Like if you have like some stuff recorded by the voice actor and then like some of like, like basic things that they said. Like, yeah, did that wake you up or something, right? They just like and like get some pieces, merge them together, get a separate line. Nice secret, nice. Now I haven't seen, haven't seen. Uh, the Division Heartland has been raided, uh, suggesting an early 2024 release. Uh, a defamation? No, I doubt it. A defamation about who? Division Heartland has been raided by the Taiwanese rating board, suggesting that the game could be released in early 2024. So that's gonna be the uh, the free division, I guess. All right. Rated for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, S, and PC. Another division. And then there's gonna be even more division there. Mm, nah, defamation would be if, like, yeah, if, if they would make it look like they said something bad eh, when they didn't actually say it, yeah. In the case if it would be like using their lines to just make some other voice line that they didn't actually record, eh? like that would be something else. That would be something else. Just kind of either like using their voice with no permission because they didn't record this line, that line, you just kind of like compare compiled it out, out of other stuff sort of what AI kind of does in a way right but without using AI so it's kind of like I don't know is it actually like questionable or not how, how did the law covers that then the labor law and everything and unions like if you use some of those lines Spooderman 2 featured only 10% of Venom's recorded dialogue eh? So I guess there's going to be some DLCing, Follow-up title or a spin-off that will focus almost entirely on the Kyoto character. 90% of Venom's recorded dialogue may have been a cut from the base game. Ten percent of his uh, Venom dialogue in Marvel Spider-Man 2. Huh? Uh, isn't the last we'll see of Venom? Yeah, I mean, I mean that would make sense. Yeah, weren't they going for some some movies and stuff also centered around? So that would make sense. A Geoff Keighley wants a tougher security at the Game Awards. Eh? Yep, another one. The last year, individuals with bizarre agendas stormed the stage twice during events that were hosted by Geoff Keighley. Yeah. This was the Game Awards 2022. Questionable, you slipped onto the stage and dedicated an award to Bill Clinton. Yeah, that one at least was kind of like a less PP. The second one was already a bit too dank. Games come opening night live in August. Another one. Again about Bill Clinton. I think that was about GTA that guy was uh, yelling about. The second one. Don't want to talk about that stuff too publicly just because of security. Definitely have plans and we're trying to do all we can to keep me safe, but also everyone watching the show, the audience, people participating in the show and everything. Certainly something we're thinking about. We appreciate the concern. 
Believe me, that's something that is top of mind for us, and we also want to put on a great show that celebrates these games and celebrates a lot of video games, so that's an important thing to keep in mind as well. Yeah, appreciate the concern around that. Gotta be beefing up the security. I just need like someone to handle, you know, like the guests on stage and stuff. Like when some someone is going for the award, they just should, you know, kind of like say who's who's uh, from their team and everything going there, and that's it. Yeah, on stage you shouldn't be able to get that easily in general. That was kind of pipiega. He saw the snack. The bingo car ready for TGA. Yeah, soon. Already soon. Geoff has snipers and landmines. Could be, yeah. No Resident Evil remakes planned for 2024. Insider claim. Damn, son, can you imagine? A whole year with no remakes. How can we live? How can we live? What will Jeff put to the, the, game, the Game Awards nomination next year if there is no Resident Evil remakes? Damn, son. Not gonna be any good games, probably. Working on two remakes of Resident Evil. Damn, son. When are they gonna be starting to remake the remakes already? Are we, are we there yet? <laughs> like, Last of Us 2 getting a remaster already kind of like means that you can expect anything nowadays from the industry, dude. A new EA patent wants to uh, let you voice in-game characters. Computer-implemented method of generating speech audio in the video game is provided. This, the method includes inputting into a synthesizer model. Input data that represents speech content. The patent's abstract reads. Source acoustic features for the speech content in the voice of a source speaker are generated in our input along with the speaker embedding associated with the player of the video game into acoustic feature encoder of a voice converter. Target acoustic features are processed with one or more modules to generate speech audio in the voice of the player. In addition to recording their own voice, this feature will allow text input. This would let players type the dialogue they want their character to say. Okay. And what would we gonna do with that dialogue though? So like, alright, character will say something, but how NPCs will react to it? That probably gonna be implying that there's gonna be some sort of like AI processing, I guess, that will try to understand what did you want and to answer you. But then also I guess that should be some sort of AI answering module for that too. And now we're getting there for full like, you know, AI generated stuff there. Which, I mean, nowadays wouldn't really surprise me. Not gonna surprise me. Chinese gamer dies after alleged stream-induced exhaustion. Damn, son. In Zhengzhou, China, a young student has reportedly died following five consecutive all-night streams that lasted more than nine hours apiece. It had been said that the student, Li Hao, was working as an online streamer for Henan Qinyu Culture and Media Co. and was contracted to stream for 240 hours across 26 days, as well as upload 15 videos a month to bolster his content supply chain. See, that's the that's the that's the content creator Sigma grind, man, dude. See where it can get to you in the end. Eh? Anyone dreaming about the career, you know, as a content creator? Like, look at look at what she need to fucking go through, dude. <laughs> Just get the proper diploma and go working, man. And do do the office, uh, you know, nine to five, and live a good life. Let's be real. November 10th, Lee was found to be unresponsive in his home by friends, and upon arrival at the local hospital, he was pronounced dead. Been alleged that Li Hao was worked to exhaustion, having been transferred to the night shift by his employers because of better tips and more earnings, a move that he apparently didn't want to make. It's not the game, and a report published by China Daily it was revealed that the company is actively challenging the allegations, denying that it is responsible for the death of Li Hao. 
was stressed by a representative that, of the company that uh, we provide the location and we take a commission from his tips and it's just a simple cooperation. Was claimed that employees are able to choose their own hours and the link of their live streams. And Li Hao overwalked himself by trying to do so much alongside his studies. According to reports, the company has offered Li Hao's family the equivalent of $700 in compensation. Damn, son. The generosity. But any further requests would need to go through legal channels. However, the company did also admit that live streamers often struggle to find a balance between earning their money and overworking themselves. With that being said, the representative still insisted that the company wasn't responsible for what happened to Li Hao. Well, I would say it's not the balance between earning the money and overworking themselves. It's the balance between, you know, kind of like growing and having a career out of that and overworking. That's the thing. You don't grind, you don't grow. That's the problem. Yeah, 240 hours across 26 days. Um, that's quite, that's quite. So 15 videos a month. You need time to edit that shit too. That is insane, man. Yeah, find the, find the better career, man. To be honest, to be honest. I would not recommend that. Denhauser's new game studio files two new trademarks. Rockstar Games co-founder Denhauser has filed for two new trademarks under his new game studio Apps Adventures. First spotted by a GTA forum user Dedes Disco, the new two trademarks are for names American Caper and A Better Paradise. Both trademarks were filed on July 28, 2023. Houser left Rockstar Games in March 2020 for undisclosed reasons and later went on to found the two new companies, Absurd Ventures and Absurd Ventures in Games. So yeah, this one that they... The, these ones, uh, these trademarks are not even for games. So games are kind of secondary for, for their company there. Ika Geekalo. Uh, the As he's Dave, I say. Skull and Bones, the release date is February 2024. There it is. Everyone's poking. Finally got the release date. That's not the first time it got the release date, though. The information follows official announcement from Ubisoft in October that the game has a release window for a set of for a quarter four financial year 23-24. Last week, Daryl Long, who will be moving to Toronto to become managing director, confirmed that the game will ship before the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, and another one in February, by the way. Yep, exactly. Priorities for the game are currently live on the Ubisoft store priced at £50, but Insider Gaming understands that Ubisoft also plans to release a premium version of the game. Oh, what a twist. Did we get the, the early launch or something then? Been unable to pinpoint exact contents of the premium edition. Ah, oh, there it is. Understood that the players will be able to play the game on February 13th with the three days of early access. The classic, the classic. Eternalista, hello. A new world with boats at last. Nah, it's 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 like the not new world with the boats. It's it's just the boats basically. There's nothing of new world there really even. Like you play as a boat. You just play as a boat, at least how it was uh, last time. Unless they changed it that much, I, I doubt it though. You are actually just a boat in this game. Not a captain or something, you are the boat. And like, I mean, it could actually be kind of fun to play a bit, but first of all, you had the prices. Second of all, it's just like this like overloaded UI. Fiesta, and then in the end, you pretty much kind of like play an MMO where you are a boat. <clears throat> so yeah, not sure. We'll see. Not sold on that one. Not sold on that one. Quite daunting with loading screens and farming. Yeah, we had we had some uh, test enjoyers multiple times. Uh. I mean, farming for the games like that is kind of fine, I guess. But the rest, though, we'll see. 
CD Projekt Red has nearly half of the company working on The Witcher 4. On top of that, even more developers currently in transfer from work on Cyberpunk 2077, which could mean even more a move to Polaris, which is the working name. They have the, yeah, the Polaris. Yes, that's that's basically what, what works on Polaris right now. All right, and that's the devs and transfer. So like these guys, yeah, if they're going to be joining also the, the Polaris, that's going to be a lot. We should want to remake. Uh, let's see, we have it here. Mm, doesn't seem like it. So other projects, I guess. So like somewhere there, maybe. Oh, it's a different company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Using people to make games instead of laying them off. Yeah. No need for remake, but it's happening. But it's happening. They didn't task you. They just making it already. Cult of the Lamb to add the six to the game next year. There it is. I read that right. Official Twitter account posted on Tuesday morning that it would add 6 to the game if it reached 300,000 followers by the end of the year. Within 2 hours, account surpassed that mark and the account posted to seemingly confirm the feature for the game. Aim for the very beginning of 2024. I think the announcement kind of like, or like, uh, was it like official announcement or kind of like what could go in the next update, in the next uh, DLC or something? It kind of already like sounded, I think, that there's going to be something related to some sick stuff. So I guess they just kind of decided also to, you know, let's let's just make some cool social media marketing that way. And that did work pretty good. Here to soothe some worries, and no one is forced to participate in any of the cheekier stuff as depicted in the art either. So if it is something you would rather avoid, that is entirely something you can do. There will be no explicit nudity, what you see in the art will be the most you get. CCUSA. The peak with this game just move on. No, I think they can still kind of farm with that one. Still kind of can farm with that one. They could move on though, but yeah, I guess they, especially in, in current, you know, in current economical situation, they probably just want to keep farming with that. I assume, eh? Yes, Steve, yeah. A GTA trilogy coming to Netflix games. Damn, son. If I Netflix mobile app as well as an app store and Google Play for Netflix subscribers. So you're gonna be able to get the GTA trilogy on your phones. Insane. Which I thought already was a thing for a while actually. That remastered though, but yeah, I thought there was already like the GTA like Chronicles and stuff like that. The Chinatown or whatever was on mobile, so I didn't know that it's that that the of a new thing. Yeah, it was, yeah, I thought so. Terminator Dark Fate Defiance delayed until February 2024. Burger King, Pog. Delay will allow them to refine, polish, and resolve any existing bugs. Um, For an update for you. Oh, the, the whole blog there even. Yeah, another February there. Focus improving multiplayer server infrastructure, ultra wide resolution issues, performance, and other quality of life features. 
multiplayer and server infrastructure. Will it be like that crazy in the multiplayer? I like how like it's always like, you know, especially with strategy games for some reason, like they always kind of go ham on this, like, you know, like we're going to have some insane like scene in multiplayer and PvP. And then like the week after, no one even plays that online or something. Is hey, Ekmark, hello. How are we doing? We'll see, we'll see. The demo was kind of alright of the strategy. It was kind of nice, but you know, base building or something? That was a bit sad. That was a bit sad. A flute guy is officially returning to the Game Awards. Boog! Now we're watching. Pedro Flute Guy Eustache is making an epic return to the showcase this year to bless us with his stunning musical talents. Let's go. Yeah, at least at least there's gonna be something interesting to watch in the you know when the, the musical segment kicks in, dude. <laughs> at least that was funny. So we'll see. See, stay with C. Who? The legend, man. The legend. I'll just go in ham there. I just got like all the like that cut caught him everywhere there. Is it not the not the best selection? I remember like he was going ham like super hard there. Oh yeah, there we go. At least at least something dang to watch through all this like musical shit that no one really wants. That no one really wants. The Grand Return, eh? And he became a meme after that. Oh, dude, this shit, though. Alright, I'll do this one and then wrap it up with the dang stuff. Fortnite had 100 million players in November. There it is. The return of that OG. See, the Fortnite classic. That's when you feel old, man. Like in Fortnite classic already. That's when you feel old, eh? Alright, let me see here too. That was it. Okay, this one let's do. But Bethesda are responding to negative Starfield reviews on Steam. Yeah, it was some interesting stuff. I just like went on started uh, responding to them reviews and everything Starfield currently sits with mixed review status on Steam eh? 69% of the game reviews are uh, positive eh? then that's a nice number the rest obviously less generous Respond to one user called Starfield Story generic and the gameplay boring. One member of Bethesda customer support staff replied with a post highlighting everything players can experience in the game. You can fly, you can shoot, you can mine, you can loot. Starfield is an RPG with hundreds of hours of quests to complete and characters to beat. This quest will also vary your character's skills and decisions, massively changing the outcome of your playthrough. Oh, bro, like that? That's... Uh, that's... Yeah, don't... Don't even start with that shit. <laughs> about the branching narratives and stuff. Don't even start, man. Hey, give the game another chance. This time tries different characters with different backgrounds. Eh? Feel like you're playing totally different game. Put points in different skills from a character you previously created and you are now faced with completely different decisions to make and difficulties to encounter. Like, absolutely not. Well, unless you never leveled, like, you know, like, the lockpicking and the uh, persuasion or something in the first run, then I guess, yeah, maybe you will get a little bit of a different approach there. Other than that, like, no difference. The row. Another user lamented the amount of loading screens. Oh, I'm with that user, too. 
support team replied, imploring the reviewer to consider the amount of data for the expensive gameplay that is procedurally generated to load flawlessly in under 3 seconds. Damn son. Imagine me caring about that. I just care about the loading screens. A response to the reviewer that uh, appears to have suggested they found Southfield's planets empty, but as the team said, this was by design and not boring. It's not boring, like the the what was it, like the the, the soy jack rage or something, you know, that stuff you need for that picture. Tension of Starfield's exploration is to evoke a feeling of smallness in players and make you feel overwhelmed. I can continue to explore and find a worlds that do have the resources you need or a hidden outpost to look through. The citadel size empty maps, yeah exactly. It's, it's a fun game, but yeah, like all this is kind of like copio from them, yeah. Like the, the, the you do different character and you'll get completely different playthrough is just bro. Nope. Not at all. And so far I didn't really see it. Like I mean there is obviously kind of like this like you know good and evil choice. And if you if you have persuasion, then you have usually, you know, just like shoot the way through or persuade people. That's like the, as far as choices go, really. And other skills they kick in as a dialogue options really rarely. Like they could do it way better. Like when they kick in, it's nice, but like that's really rare. Like there's a lot of like cool things that could be done way more, but they they aren't. All right. This. Microsoft wants Game Pass on a PlayStation, Nintendo, and every screen possible. Didn't actually feel sad that they kinda don't, though, after that. Yeah, Xbox CFO. I, th I thought, I thought uh, Phil after that kinda said that they are not really planning to. They're not really planning to. Oh yeah, there it is. No plans for Xbox Game Pass on PlayStation and Nintendo. So yeah, they already kind of... Phil already kind of said no and left. Let's open this stuff. Oh, it's the Epic Games. Yeah, that's a nice website they have there. Loading like the like uh, Starfield loading screens there. Three brand new experiences coming to Fortnite. A rocket Racing, a Fortnite Festival, and Lego Fortnite. A Lego Fortnite is the ultimate survival crafting Lego adventure. It introduces vast open worlds where the magic of Lego building and Fortnite collide. Designed for people of all ages to enjoy the gear, game will encourage creativity, experimentation, and collaboration through play. December 7th. The Rocket Racing, a supersonic arcade racer where players drift, fly, and boost with friends through an ever-growing selection of tracks. Rocket Racing is developed by Psyonix, the visionary team behind Rocket League, and will be available to play December 8th. Fortnite Festival, a new music game where players can play in a band with friends or perform solo on stage with hit music by their favorite artists. Built by Harmonix, the studio behind the iconic music game Rock Band Festival marks the beginning of music gaming in Fortnite. Damn son. The Fortnite is expanding and going ham now, after all those hundred million of players. Well, it's already on the Fortnite. You can uh, wrap it up with this one, with this beautiful one. Peter Griffin and Solid Snake are coming to Fortnite. The sun. But there they are. Beautiful data miners and all. And the other ones, Lego. Then there's gonna be uh, the Eminem will be uh, making his way to the game. There it is. Uh, yeah, the Fortnite Rhythm Mode. 
Uh, Lady Gaga Linkin Park. Damn, son. This song is like older than Fortnite players at this point already. By a lot, probably, even. Peter Griffin and Fortnite, dude. Eh? What a time to be alive, man. What a time to be alive. Eh? Uh, let's see, that's I think pretty much it. Yeah, pretty much. Think so. Huh? The RuneScape PvP montage is like 20 years ago, yep. I mean, like when, like I remember like now, but like MTV uh, was probably... Uh, like 2014, I guess, or something. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, 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 no. 2004, dude. 2004, like the decade a bit missed by a decade there. 2004 or some shit. No, even three, I think. I was like 14 or something. I remember that was the time, like the the knob was on like MTV or something. Like I had like Link, I had the Meteor and the Hybrid Theory on my MP3 player in 2004 already for sure. Yeah, in 2004, 2005 for sure. <clears throat> 2003, yeah, yeah. Insane. Yeah, as I said, it's like older than some players there. Still have MP3 player? It's somewhere at home unless my like parents like threw it away or something. Well, it's 256 megabytes, dude. It's quite a chunky boy there. But it was good. It was good. Yeah, it was working for a while. I see, Rev, I see. Now, then I can already, like, switch to the phone. And then I already can, like, nowadays not, not really, like, listening anything outside. I'm just enjoying the silence. Well, there's usually no silence in the city, but still, you know. Let's see what I see. Hope the song is older than you, yeah. True. Feels old, man. <laughs> 50 grams too heavy. Well, I mean, like, you kind of usually kind of need to have it on you anyway. So might as well. Might as well just use it then. Yeah, nowadays I just kind of like listen to nothing. I do have MP3 actually. Well, it's at home, but... Uh, for the swimming pool it's like the waterproof mp3 with uh, the special uh, waterproof uh, earbuds it was really nice that was really nice even though like the cable on the earbuds wasn't that good i'm not sure maybe because of like the dank water there or something i don't know but i mean my skin can survive it can fucking plastic survive it then <laughs> come on dude and be able to buy some uh, later at some point if i'll go now we'll go back to swimming, but I feel like I'm gonna already probably when we move to Georgia, I'm just gonna return to it with some sea. So now I do have some other things to do in the mornings, I guess. Gonna grind the productivity. All right, that is pretty much it in terms of the news. I started earlier today with the news because, yeah, about time I need to actually call it and go get ready because we go in. Uh, to meet with our friends and we're gonna be eating the local specialty called Kiala, which is the cooked cow's head So yeah, gonna be posting that on stories probably That will be interesting. So yes, yeah, it's uh, 5 p.m. already and at 6 p.m. We go there so I'll need to get ready and peace out sadly 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 True, stay true. Feel bad, man. I'm gonna be compensating. I'm gonna be compensating with some extra hours some other time. Right, no one's out of out of our boys' life yet. All right, then we just gonna cool it. So yeah, I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday, so we gonna be playing Starfield RPG Monday as usual. Christmas three times soon? Well, I mean, I need to get one. I'll need to get one. I kind of will be looking into it. I plan to, yeah. 
on the new place now. We need to get the tree somehow, somewhere, and arrange everything. But I'll try, I'll try for sure. So yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow 9 a.m. CET, as usual, I will be back. We are doing uh, that Starfield in. And yeah, next week, like Tuesday, probably going to be some other stuff also added to the list. And then, you know, like more and more stuff going to be coming in because Starfield slowly kind of like running out of meaningful side quests, I guess. Slowly, slowly. And I plan to finish it by like the end of my game pass. Yeah, that I plan to at least. But yeah, for now, I am out. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for all the support, all the subs, resubs, followers, donors. Appreciate a lot. You guys are insane. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, have a nice rest of your Sunday evening. See you all tomorrow. Love you all. Bye-bye.